My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening from Brother Sudhir from Hyderabad, India. Uh, it's been quite a while since I met you via internet on the Facebook live page. But today the Lord has given me the grace to uh, be able to come online and uh, share a few things with you all. I've been praying for all of my friends who come uh, regularly visit uh, my page and uh, and leave a few comments so on and so forth. And uh, I pray for all who are in need, just like myself and my family. God has been so good to us, even in spite of the fact that these are such uh, terrible times of great afflictions and and um, it's not so easy as we all know well and still we hear a lot about the corona pandemic still claiming some lives and as i hear the news from day to day i understand that the pandemic has not left and uh, and that it is going to have its terrible impact upon the lives of people. But whatever be the situation, we must all realize that our God is in control of this entire situation. He knows what is happening at that uh, <coughs> Excuse me. And he cares for all who look to him in faith for his grace, for their lives and for their sustenance and for the health and any other need. God is our sufficiency. We praise God for uh, such a wonderful, faithful God, like our God who cares for us and who knows our um, problems of our difficulties and who is sympathetic towards everything that we go through and he has a desire to help us and show forth his mighty power in our own lives so that we would experience the greatness of our God. So this evening, I'm so glad. The reason for me not coming on live as, as often as I used to before is because I've been traveling quite a lot into the outlying villages and uh, in so many different areas we've been able to go on the behalf of uh, our Faith International Partners and Emmanuel Baptist Ministries of India. We launched a program called a special evangelistic uh, outreach evangelism campaigns in so many different places. Been, we've been able to reach almost um, some 35, 40 different villages in so many regions. And I praise God for the great um, message of hope and uh, the salvation in Jesus Christ that we preach, that we openly declare in the public areas where a lot of people got saved and uh, several people uh, showed positive interest in knowing more about our God and um, some um, there were some baptisms and so on and so forth so I praise God for all of that that's one of the basic reasons why I have not been able to come on live on the Facebook and uh, now that I am, the Lord has given me the grace uh, to take this time to address you and update you on what God has been doing here in my life and in my family. Our son Samuel is attending college for his undergraduate course. And uh, my wife is home. She is striving with all of our strength to serve the Lord and to be of great help and assistance to me and our son Samuel Gregory as he goes in the college, goes to the college in the morning hour 
comes in the evening, so she would prepare him uh, breakfast, and um, and she would also prepare a, a lunch box for him, and then um, I would uh, study the Word of God, trying to learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ and whatever I have come to know, I usually try to share it with uh, fellow brethren. It gives me great joy and uh, it is such a delight to me, to my soul. So anyway, this evening, um, the Lord is wanting me to share a few things which I would not hesitate to do quickly. And uh, at the end, I would pray and conclude. So the this evening, uh, what I'm wanting to share with you is uh, what is our God-given purpose in life. I wanted to uh, share a few things on that. What is our God-given purpose in life? So I want to say that God has given us destiny. He has given us a purpose. And in order to bring him the greatest glory and to expand his kingdom, all of us, all of us who believe in him, all of us who have been called of the Lord with the glorious call of going out into the world and preaching the gospel, that's the, the primary purpose in our lives. My beloved, uh, we must understand this. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, verses 6 and 7, the book of Isaiah 43, chapter 43, <clears throat> Please bear with me. This paper is very thin and I need to open it up and read for us. Chapter number 43, verses uh, 6 through 7. 6 and 7, let's... Okay, I read from my King James Bible. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep up back, uh, keep not back, bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Here I believe the Lord is saying to us, uh, the Lord of heaven, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our great Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, wants to tell us in verse number 5, actually Isaiah 43, 5 through 7, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. So although the context is different, and that uh, this, was, uh, given, this was spoken to some uh, somebody back in those times, he, God's word is alive and it is relevant even for today. And God is actually speaking to us through his living word. This has application even for our days, for our times. And I believe it's my personal uh, understanding and opinion that uh, the Lord wants his children to be aware of the very purpose for which God has called us and what is the primary purpose of all of us who are 
called by him uh, to serving him in, in God-given places and amongst people that have been called that, that, that God loved and, and uh, God sent us uh, to such people where he wanted us to work. And uh, even though we don't always understand fully well, it is so clear that uh, God is working in our lives, uh, in our lives to, um, to actually get things done through us. Only we can do those things which he purposed for us to do. So this evening, I would like to say it always starts with the place of God in our lives and actions. It always begins, you know, if we do love him, if we do care for his commandments. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the weather is so tricky, yet it's going to be. Uh, very cold, uh, very soon, and uh, so I feel the the cold already being exposed <clears throat> in, in my different travels. But anyway, so it always starts with the place of God in our lives and actions. Let us look to uh, the scripture in the Old Testament book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter number six. Six. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six. Mm. The word of God says in six five. Um, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. God is a jealous God. God has this requirement from all of us who have been called, all of us who serve him. He has given us a great salvation. And the salvation is, it uh, keeps us active, the salvation which we received. It has been given with uh, responsibility. We, we as people that have been rescued, people who have been, whose sins have been forgiven freely by the grace of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ, who have been justified and accepted in God's beloved Son, Jesus Christ, so that uh, we have passed from death unto eternal life. Eternal life has been given to us freely as a gift and not because of our works, but uh, we found grace in the sight of God. God has given us His free grace and His free gift of eternal life. So when we have received this free gift, we must be able to think about all others who are uh, suffering and who are not having the knowledge about this great God of heaven, God who, who, who loved us, who cared for us while we were yet sinners. Christ came to die for the ungodly. And uh, all these wicked people can be saved if they realize that Jesus is not demanding anything from them except the fact that they understand and realize their sinfulness and their helplessness, that uh, when any sinner comes to God in faith, because the Word of God says, without faith it is impossible to please God. God's Word says that all must please God, our Savior, and our Creator God, our Creator God, who also became our Savior, who also became our personal God, our Savior, to whom we talk to and who, whose fellowship we always seek and 
whose sovereignty we acknowledge and uh, we obey and uh, his sovereign will is whatever he wills and whatever he chooses to do through us he would strengthen he would encourage he would equip us and he would open up our spiritual vision so that uh, we can uh, clearly qu quickly understand that what god wanted us to learn and so i understand uh, the word of god is saying and uh, thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart some people say it is from the old testament i don't see much big difference between the old testament and the new the old is uh, fulfilled in the new and god taught all the spiritual lessons to his precious people god chose one person and god chose one family and through that one per person and uh, god built a nation and through that nation god uh, touched all humanity all people everywhere across all five different continents people living in so many different uh, cultures traditions and so on and so forth everybody is loved of god for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life god's purpose is to get to give the opportunity for all the sinners in this world who have most of whom have been uh, spiritually dead by god's grace some have been alive and some have been uh, working on making the the word of god real to everybody bringing uh, the message of god as god's um, servants god's prophets and god's uh, men who would take forward the project of god the prop the purpose of god the 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 program of god so any such person who would uh, be used of god mightily the requirement i believe is and thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart let us question ourselves my beloved uh, brothers and sisters in christ have we been in great love with the lord jesus christ have we realized how much he loved us and how much he paid for us and how much he cared for us while we were yet sinners he died for us and god raised him from amongst the dead according to his promise and according to his will on the third day jesus rose back to life defeating the death and breaking the the sting of death and uh, death has no more power upon us and the sting of death is broke broken it is ineffective now jesus conquered the death jesus came back to life he is living and he wants to uh, give that power of resurrection to everyone and in order to be filled with that kind of power of the resurrection of jesus christ our lord we must love him we must love him supremely god's word says and thou shall love the lord thy god with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might hmm. this is such a profound statement uh, it's a great uh, commandment god gave to the children of israel and we are his household of faith now in the new testament times and his last days children of god having been reconciled to god the father through his son's uh, sacrifice on, on our behalf on the cross of calvary the word of god says it always starts with the place of god in our lives and actions so just as i i read now from that verse we must love him supremely and the proverbs uh, chapter 3 uh the 
Proverbs. Oops. Proverbs chapter 3. Hmm. Ah. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5, 6, and 7. I'm reading. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I believe the primary requirements for all of us as the children of God, as believers in Christ, and especially as as uh, the called servants of Christ, called. We have been called by him, especially those who have been appointed to be his servants in these days. God's word says very clearly, trust in the Lord. Our trust in him is the supreme requirement, the primary the greatest requirement. We don't have trust in Him. Trust in the Lord. We don't trust in our resources. We don't trust in anything. and We don't trust in men. We trust in God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. We have to believe with all of our hearts. Uh, that means total trust in Him. And lean not unto thine own understanding. We we have, uh, we don't know the uh, exactly what would happen to us. We don't know the future, but he is the God who is alive and who knows the future, who is in control, who, who controls the time. Our times and our seasons are in his hand. So we believe in the Lord with all of our hearts. First and foremost, and lean. We don't lean upon our own understanding. The word of God says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The key is, he must direct us. We should allow him to direct us. He has sent his Holy Spirit to live in us on a day to day basis as we are led by him as he is indwelt we are indwelt of him as he he directs our path and understands our needs as he sees through our hearts and hearts desires and our plans and purposes we must uh, plainly and clearly see that uh, we have to be led and directed and by him. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. A lot of times our problem as human beings is we believe in our own knowledge, in our own experiences and in our own uh, communities, our friends, in our, uh, we have trust and faith in our families. We talk a lot about how great our um, heritage or uh, what kind of a family we are from, and so on and so forth. We talk great about our parents, which is nothing wrong. God has given them to us, and they did what they were led of the Lord to do, and they taught us while they were alive, and now that they are gone to be with Him. Ultimately, it should be He, our God, who must, whom we trust and whom uh, we rely upon and uh, we need to know that our our wisdom and our knowledge is very, very limited. Wisdom 7, 3, 7, Proverbs 3, 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. In our own eyes and in our own estimation, in our own uh, expectations, people think we are very wise and we believe what people say, you know, uh, about that. A lot of times people flatter. A lot of times people would, uh, out of, uh, you know, goodness in their hearts, they say, well, you are a good person, a great person, a man of great experience. 
so on and so forth. But whatever man says is, is not what we need. Whatever man, you know, whenever he, he speaks higher about us, great about us, we should give God the glory. Yes, the Lord used me. Yes, the Lord has been directing me. Yes, the Lord has been providing for my needs so I have not fallen prey to the devil. Even when I when I am tempted, even when the devil comes to hit me hard and, uh, and play havoc in my life, we must say, God has been my helper, has been my great help, my refuge, my, 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 my buckler, God whom I trust, God upon whose goodness and mercy I lay myself. You know, we have to say these things. That should be our understanding. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. We fear the Lord. It's not a fear. It's, it's a great uh, reverence for God, giving Him the priority, the supremacy in our lives, the, the, the great place. He, he must be central. His uh, divine purpose and His eternal plan for our lives must be known. We have to pray about that, ask the Lord to show to us, which He would clearly show. When we ask, we will receive the answer for our prayer. And when we hear that uh, He has appointed us to live for Him and win precious souls for His kingdom and uh, proclaim the goodness and the grace of God as we go out to preach the gospel, Gospel is the good, the, the good news. People are vexed of hearing all false, bad news that we see and hear in the, in the world. Everywhere there is conflict, there is war, there is disease, there is defeat, uh, there is want, there is need. And boy, everything in this world is so terrible. It is all damaged and the world is in great conflict. It's in great turmoil. We hear about the earthquakes and uh, the weather uh, changes and the 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 uh, the, uh, the fights between people, the the communities. People are falling upon uh, people, and there is war and the production of all massive. Uh, um, uh, weapons of massive uh, destruction, destruction of mankind. They detonate uh, the bombs and instead of uh, spending that kind of money on those huge projects, uh, they can um, help people find a job, provide livelihood for people and uh, provide help and employment, uh, help to those who are in uh, greatest needs like health, people who have been physically challenged and uh, even emotionally, mentally, they can be rescued and supported with all the monies uh, that the governments expend on the production of those things, uh, mass weapons of mass destruction. But anyway, we are uh, living in the end times and the Word of God says we have a we do have a purpose. That's what I understand, my beloved. And I'm sure you also have an understanding. You have understood it, in fact, and I'm, I'm glad uh, some of you have been serving the Lord very diligently. And we must seek to serve Him and praise Him. And the sole purpose is to serve the purposes of God. He will always make His purposes clear to us. And as we lean upon Him, as we read His Word, meditate upon His Word, and study and, and dwell upon the thoughts of God, and God's destiny for us will lead to a life fulfilling and uh, victorious. People often get depressed because they are not aware of their destiny. That's the problem. A lot of people don't realize the, the purpose for which God called them. Each member of the, the local church, 
the body of Christ has to be to fulfill his purpose. Everyone as the body of believers, as a community of God-honoring, God-fearing, Bible-believing Christians, we must have this understanding, a deeper understanding. When they fail, the body of Christ can, can't function that well. The, a lot of times people have a, a false notion that only pastors and those that have been ordained must go preach the gospel or proclaim it and uh, they don't have anything to do with it. Some people believe here, at least in this place, in these areas, because maybe because of uh, the lack of uh, uh, the depth of faith and uh, lack of uh, uh, studying the word. People don't have the knowledge. They, they have not learned to read and write and illiteracy is one of the problems uh, which still is a great problem in some places. Illiteracy and uh, uh, lack of uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the Word of God, the Bibles are not uh, as many of them are not available. People can't even afford, people don't even know where they can buy. And so there is a necessity of uh, distributing God's word. Those of uh, the believers who can afford buying one, it would be great. I always recommend them to go buy, buy a Bible in such and such place and so on and so please. Some do. Some, Most of them have Bibles, but some don't have and some don't even have the uh, ability to, I mean, the, they are not literate. Functional literacy is not there. So let us only pray and hope and trust that God will help us. Uh, but um, um, God's people have to realize that God has given His church the, the purpose of uh, preaching the gospel, not just to the pastor, not just to those few people who are uh, serving in the church, who have been um, chosen by God. But every, every church member, every believer must uh, take it to their hearts and, and pray for God's ability uh, uh, to be granted to them to share their testimony, be bold and confident in Him, rely upon His promises and take His word and uh, with that, we can go forward. And so, determine if you are uh, true to your call or that you do what you are supposed to do. A lot of times we are not sure. Some people are not really sure why they were called, what God wants them to do, basically. And so... Uh, let us turn to the book of Acts, the book of Acts in the New Testament, uh, Romans, the okay. book of Acts 13, chapter 13, and verse number 36, book of Acts, chapter number 13, and verse 36. God's word says here, verse number 36, boy, 36, the word of God says, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. We must know that uh, we can serve God in our own generation. While it is called day, we can go and preach. Uh, when we have the opportunity, we only we can work. And the doors are all closed and 
uh, we just can't go and serve. Therefore, um, we have to be very eager to serve God. And we have to determine if we have to make sure we are uh, doing what God wants, wanted us to do, what He has called us to do. Have we been obedient to God, my beloved? Why don't we question ourselves? Has, have our hearts been um, pointing at us, saying we have not been doing what God wanted us to do? We have not been faithful in doing what God called us to do? Let us answer these questions ourselves and make sure we are pleasing God through our obedience and uh, being faithful to our call. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we have to we have to do these things through um, Though persecution played the um, Apostle Paul throughout his life, he, he, he you know, persecution was, it plagued his uh, life. I mean, every time there was some con conflict, there were some people uh, making a very strong commitment and uh, taking up oaths to not eat until they they finish up Paul the Apostle because he was such a controversial person. He stood for the gospel. Gospel is the exclusive message. Gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And so in order to let people have a, an opinion or let them respond, uh, for them to respond. We must take the gospel, preach here, strong and powerful, and give the option to people, give the opportunity for people to respond and to obey. And definitely there have been so many in the past, and even these days, even when the days are too hard and Satan is at work, uh, and he's hitting hard the men who stand for the gospel, people who are strong in their commitment to their families. Satan wants to see the destruction of families and uh, disunity in the families and, and uh, lack of faith toward one another. Within the local congregations, people have been uh, Satan has been deceiving a lot of faithful Christians also. So let us be concerned about this and let us pray for God to really realize, help us realize um, our primary purposes uh, for our lives. Why do we exist? What is our goal? What is the mission in our life? Uh, concerning God, what God has called us to do. Why are we here? What are we going to do? And how long are we going to be faithful to God? Why don't we commit ourselves to obeying God, doing His will all the days of our lives? God's destiny uh, requires our single-minded focus. God's destiny requires our single-minded focus. So are we focusing on what is the, what is so important for us, what is so important for our God, what is good for our community, what is good for our families, and what is good for God's local churches? Are we focusing on those things that is answer for ourselves. Oh, beloved, God has these wonderful thoughts for us. God's Word says so many wonderful things. As we study and meditate upon God's Word, we, we, we can come to some conclusions and we can sum up 
and of course this is my little summary and uh, so i wanted to share a few things with you I hope it has made some sense it is a little sensible <laughs> because it is from god's word let us try to do our very best to pleasing our savior and uh, let the holy spirit give us the grace to see even uh, what god wants us to see and then obey his will and keep on preaching the good news of the gospel of our lord jesus christ let us commit our families to him let us uh, take good care of ourselves our physical bodies need to be strong so that we can go day by day with power as god continues to give us his grace and strength we have to determine to go forward uh, not caring for how strong the devil is he is a defeated foe and we have a a great conqueror our savior our loving god our creator who is in us much more stronger than the one that is in the world and trying to influence and aff- afflict everybody and, and uh, destroy families churches individuals and the purposes of god god needs you my friend god needs me and uh, let us know that let us be careful in uh, keeping our lives in his hands uh obeying him giving our entire focus and our attention our love our strength and everything let us ask the lord's help uh, for enabling us to live like he wants us to live in these last days to make a difference in somebody else's life let's pray Oh dear gracious heavenly father how i love you oh god for giving me the burden to share at least a few thoughts of mine i'm not an eloquent preacher a great scholar or anything like that but because i've been impacted by your grace and your mercy and you allow lord having received the call from on high from you to go and preach the gospel to the needy people to the poor that i have decided never to look back never to yield to the temptations of the devil even in spite of the fact that we have been in prison for some time for the cause of the gospel of christ we have been falsely accused and and uh, we have been hated but lord you loved us supremely none can love us like you loved none can rescue us like you do and lord when you are with us even just like those hebrew children in the old testament times shadrach meshach and abednego lord even in the midst of fire it wouldn't harm us and would be glad oh god to just be with you content with such things as we have and even though we are few even though we are not very popular not very well accepted everywhere but lord you have been opening up some doors some effectual doors of opportunity where we are able to go and preach faithfully the good news and the the grace of god the good news of the gospel of jesus christ the fact that jesus loves the sinners and hates the sin and he opens the way for sinners to enter into the narrow way the straight way where they can be led by the spirit of god where they can be thoroughly cleansed by the power of god's uh, precious blood jesus christ's blood that god would accept them uh, to belong to his family oh father help us to take these glorious gospel truths to the understanding of people help us to touch so many lives 
help us to strengthen the local churches help us to be like minded uh, to be somebody who thinks on the lines of the lord jesus christ and the and the, the style and in the way of the lord jesus christ to show forth the love of christ to others help me o oh god to keep my health to be alive and be active so that i can every day I can touch some lives bless everyone who watches this message especially those that are diligent in serving you especially those that have made strong commitments to doing you will all the days of their lives my precious brothers and sisters lord i pray for them please uphold all of us bless the local churches and the pastors that are true to their calling that are faithful to you o oh god help my family and myself and my our son uh, to be faithful to you all the days of our lives my my siblings my brothers sisters uh, all of them and their kids and their spouses o oh god let everybody be happy healthy and faithful to serving you i bring all of the precious ones into your hands lord and uh, help me with another opportunity to share some good news preach some sensible messages so that others can be helped others can also be inspired others can understand in what kind of circumstances being enabled of you how we are going forward help all the saints to pray for us as well as us praying for them lord help us uh, to love one another help one another and carry one another's burdens lord even though we do have a lot of needs and uh, difficult situations where we need your gracious help father we know that you are in control of our lives and you are leading us I give you praise glory and honor for all of uh, what you mean to us oh god I submit myself and our dear ones into your hands my family and all the pastors and like minded men of god who are praying for us and uh, whose households are uh, for you oh god and the churches who are serving and who have oh god, oh god gotten behind us in some ways to uphold us and to push us forward in God's work. Thank you Father for all of them. We give you praise, glory and honor. In Jesus precious name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you beloved for uh, uh, patiently watching this message of mine. I'm not very active, but I hope God will strengthen me and touch my body. to gain its strength and to also be uh, fast in thinking and in speaking and expressing and be complete in in every sense to uh, do the work of god help uh, thank you for your uh, being an inspiration to me also I greet all of you in Jesus name and let your families and households know we care for you all and we pray here and uh, knowing that our uh, redemption is drawing nigh we have been redeemed by the blood of Christ but we do have these frail bodies that also need to be redeemed and uh, so so long as we live in this flesh and the body of flesh we need god's strength more and more every day and our body is subject to so many uh, weaknesses tests trials and satan's attacks so let's be mindful let's be uh, gracious and let's be grateful and uh, let us serve him as he has called us uh, the glorious call and with all of our strength let us Uh, acknowledge his grace and let us preach his good news uh, 